Just recently, on December 9, 2020, soon after the beginning of the third plague, we've released a video with a very deep and compact message entitled, How Long, O Lord? It answers the question of whether or when the Lord of Hosts will finally arise to take his own to himself, and it points out how he announces his coming. A few Christians, but unfortunately not yet all, already look up into the firmament to watch and study the biblical Maseroth, or extraordinary celestial phenomena, and learn to understand God's voice. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. How does God shake the heavens when he speaks? And what does he proclaim when he thunders from heaven? What he speaks about is the coming of Jesus and the associated wrath of God, the plagues. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In the aforementioned video, we try to turn the gaze of Christianity upwards once again highlighting how exceptional the three fast radio bursts, or FRBs, are. Anyone who hasn't yet seen the video, How Long, O Lord, should do so at their earliest convenience. In this video today, we want to explicitly point out how rarely three FRBs from our own galaxy would point precisely to three important waymarks on the clock of God in Orion, to the point that it would be statistically impossible for this to happen sheerly out of pure coincidence. And if it is not mere coincidence, then it must be God communicating with us, because no man can orchestrate the celestial phenomena. The first FRB ever detected occurred in 2001, but was not discovered in archived data until 2006. According to Wikipedia, by 2017, only about 25 FRBs were known to have happened, at which point a special facility called CHIME came into service and dramatically increased the number of FRBs discovered from that time forward. Considering that an FRB happens in the universe about every 10 seconds, according to the German Wikipedia, that amounts to a little over 3.1 million bursts per year. This estimate refers to all fast radio bursts of any intensity emitted anywhere in the vast universe, which scientists estimate to hold some 100 billion galaxies. However, among these FRBs, we can only detect the signals of those that are directed toward Earth. Statistically, that means we would have to wait a trillion seconds, on average, before an FRB would be emitted somewhere in our own galaxy. That would be a waiting time of almost 32 millennia, making it no wonder why scientists are so thrilled with the lucky detections that were made in 2020. To put this another way, such an FRB happening in our galaxy in a specific year, such as 2020, within the span of an average of 32 millennia, has a probability of merely 0 0.00003. That's for any FRB in our galaxy. The type of FRB that actually happened is even more unique. So that people can really recognize that behind these FRBs is God, who wants to send us an important message that cannot be faked by any human being, he makes it so that these three FRBs come from a single source in our galaxy. These FRBs repeat, something that had been observed in only 10 other FRBs. But the births in our galaxy did not repeat in a periodic way, as the other 10 are known to do. These occurred at apparently unrelated times, which took the scientific community by surprise because it was contrary to the expectation of the phenomenon. 
Now, it is important to remember that the three FRBs we are talking about come from our own galaxy, the only ones from within our galaxy, not from any other galaxy in the vast expanses of the unfathomable universe. So, the likelihood that it is a coincidence is decreasing even more, don't you think? With only 10 known repeaters throughout the universe, and assuming 100 billion galaxies again to do a rough calculation, the probability of an FRB in our galaxy being a repeater at all is only 0.0000000001. Combine this with the probability of hitting a date that is important on the divine clock in Orion, and the overall likelihood is drastically reduced because there is only a 1 in 365 chance of hitting a specific date. Furthermore, we are even dealing with three events on the clock, which reduces this factor in the probability by a power of three. Combining the likelihood of an FRB in our galaxy, it being a repeater, and it hitting three specific dates, results in an overall probability of about 0.5 and then 22 zeros followed by a 6. But that's not all. The magnetar that emitted these three FRBs is located on the galactic equator directly in front of the mouth of Aquila, the eagle, which stands for the king of heaven and is one of the four cardinal constellations of the Maseroth, matching the standard of the tribe of Israel in the sides of the north. What are the odds of this unique event occurring in this particular region of the sky with all this symbolic meaning? If we assume a pretty wide tolerance of about a square of 5 degrees in the heavens, the probability of an event in that location alone is about 0.0002, not counting anything else, but combined with the other factors results in a probability of about 0. Point and then 25 zeros and a 1. Those odds are less than one in one septillion. But only God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, could top it off by orchestrating it so that the first of the three fast radio bursts reached the Chime radio telescope seven years to the very day after the spectacular record-setting gamma ray burst of April 27, 2013. A lot has been written about that GRB in The Sign of Jonah, which occurred exactly on the anniversary of Christ's resurrection, according to the Biblical Jewish calendar in 2013, that is, on the second day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the day of the first fruits offering. So exactly one heavenly hour later, that's seven earthly years according to the judgment cycle of the Orion clock, the FRB thunder of that GRB lightning then began to roll through the earth, and this happened right at the point in the Orion closing cycle that we call the throne line, which also marks the beginning of the great sign of the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. More information about that amazing sign can be found in Treasures of the Lost Ark. And because God wanted to make it unmistakably clear that it is He who is speaking to us, the two subsequent heavenly FRB thunders from the same source echoed toward Earth and arrived exactly on two other highly significant dates, the anniversary of Jesus' suffering in Gethsemane and subsequent death, read Full Moon at Gethsemane to understand God's calendar, and on the day of the outpouring of the first plague, closely connected to the beginning of the last of all the cycles of the Orion clock, that is, the victory cycle, which is the cycle of the coronavirus vaccine plagues, as explained in the seven angels of vengeance, which makes it clear that Jesus Christ, as King of Kings, is without a doubt and unmistakably already on his way, and therefore his plague judgments are visible on the earth. Don't you realize that COVID is not just a challenge to be overcome sooner or later, after which life will go on again as if nothing had happened? It is God's judgment plague, and the vaccination issue that the whole world is facing is plaguing everyone. Please watch our video, The Threefold Mark of the Beast, 
But still, we are only scratching the surface of the Orion message. You can find more probability calculations for the basic Orion presentation from lastcountdown.org on slides 157 to 160. At what point does the probability of all the biblical and prophetic fulfillments become a statistical impossibility? And at what point does a person no longer need faith to see that God is behind it because it is already established as a mathematical fact? So far, very few people have recognized that in the course of time, we are already in the fourth plague. The Bible text fulfilled again so precisely and impressively that we have published a separate video entitled, What Does AstraZeneca Mean? We encourage you to watch this piece of additional evidence of the fulfillment of prophecy. In an upcoming video, we will also show why it was so urgently necessary to be cleansed by God before the beginning of the fourth plague. Protection under His wings is needed now in the face of worldwide vaccination. In the text of the fourth plague, one can read that people still do not understand God's judgments in the form of the COVID plague as such, and humble themselves. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Are you one of those who will have the realization only when the seventh plague is poured out, and still not repent, even in the full knowledge that God is in control, and then hatefully accuse him? Where will you be found standing? On God's side, because you are aligning your life to His standards? Or among the masses of those who will blaspheme the name of God, who uses fast radio bursts as His transgalactic intercom to say, I am coming! Is it loud enough? <laughs>